Hello, you too. <laughs> oh boy. It took me long enough to get myself motivated to do this uh, ceiling here. I had to clear out this area, obviously, move the pile here so I could access the, I guess I call it the attic up here. But um, it's a fairly large section, pretty straightforward, but very large for one person to try to put up um, by himself. And that was what was kind of holding me up. I was trying to figure out how I was going to lay the panel here. You know, try to get it up and then cut the window around or cut the window around and get it up. But then it may not want to stay in place and it might warp. So that was one of the factors kind of holding it up. The other was just the mess was up here all over the, the bedding area and out this area that I had to clear. So... I've cleared the area and you can see I've already installed a piece of the insulation. I bought some more of that um, big huge board. It's like a four foot by eight foot board or ten foot board, four foot by twelve foot board or something like that. I don't know, eight foot. And they actually had it on sale. I got it like 50% off because it was damaged. You know, I don't know if you can see the little dent there, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. There was a section that had a dent and they marked the, um, the panel at 50% off since I don't need a whole panel. I tried to cut around the heavily damaged part and I'm using the part that aren't so damaged. So I just need to cut this other little weird shape here, which I'm probably going to do in multiple pieces. And um, that um, will allow me to have the insulation done and then it's a matter of putting up the wood paneling. Now for the wood paneling, instead of putting up one single piece, which I think might be too hard for me to do by myself. Well, I could have tried to slide it in. But see, I'm thinking it's going to want to pull down eventually. Although it probably would have worked. Yeah, the, the issue that was really bothering me about the big piece was transporting it here to the RV park. You know, in my van. I'd have to transport it on the roof. And the last time I did that um, with this panel here, the, this, these pieces, it wanted to fly all over the road. It was like flopping around in the wind as I was driving. So, you know, I had it tied down as tight as I could and it still wanted to fly. So this time I ended up transporting it inside little blue too. And to do that, I ended up having to cut it in half. So what I did was I measured the width and then the length. And I had them cut it in half because I'm going to reassemble it right here. And then my plan is to actually run a, um, a ribbing, you know, like these ribbings that I have here from the center. I'm going to run it across to here then across from there and that way I only have a little rectangular section two little rectangular sections it'll also allow me to put the board there and draw where the um, the vent location is and once I have that then we're looking at the RV being like 80 90 percent done as far as you know the the structure it still needs the mechanical, and the tires are like rubbing. There's some issues with the tires. I don't know if they're bad. Um, so those may need to eventually all be replaced, which is going to be pretty expensive. Um, but um, Connie has come through again, and actually, um, I, I can't even describe how kind Connie has been, but um, she ended up sending a huge sum of money to try to make sure that I had enough to fully finish the RV and try to make it safe. So more than likely, I may end up getting um, some new tires just to be sure they're safe, but that's assuming that the engine and stuff will actually be fixed and it can run well. But I'm getting ready to test that over the next week or so because I'm wondering if Marcelo actually did fix it when he, um, he made the, you know, he changed out the, um, what's that, the throttle control sensor. Yeah, it's getting dark, so I gotta finish. I gotta cut this other piece. So I don't know if you can see it's kind of dark outside. So I do need to finish cutting this other piece, and I'll put it in, and then I'll see if I can't show you what it looks like. But um, the RV itself, mechanically, I don't know if it runs yet. I'm going to reset the battery per the suggestion of one of the viewers to see if the throttle position sensor after it got changed, if resetting the battery will let the computer know and then reset itself. But then I had to take the RV for a road trip, a little ride, which I don't know if you've ever tried to move a 29-foot RV. It's not exactly the same as moving a van or a car. So I have to make sure everything's secured. I have to go through the whole routine. 
which is why I'm not really looking forward to taking the RV out and testing it. And there's a chance the tires could blow, you know, while I'm on that little road trip. So some precautions are going to have to be made, and, and hopefully, you know, everything will be all right. I might even sign up for AAA um, RV, you know, just to be safe in case it has to be towed. But there, there's just a lot of stuff I still need to learn about RVs in general. Anyhow, we're not dealing with that right now. We are dealing with uh, getting this up. So for tonight, I'm just going to get the... Um, Try to get the insulation up so that the insulation is up along the entire ceiling area. And then tomorrow or sometime this week, I will put the panel up. And then the RV will be about 90% done as far as aesthetics. I do need to try to get all the trim and the edges to even things out and hold things up. And um, need to try to figure out what to do with this whole leaking roof situation here because this is ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it has to do with this part being ca uh, caved in because of the weight. I might try to push it up, but, you know, I could end up poking the roof and poking a hole through the entire roof. So, i got to be careful with that. Um, the, the roofing on this RV is pretty weak. Or just keep routing water like I've been doing. <laughs> but it's moving. The location has shifted over here now for some weird reason. Instead of, instead of water running there, it's spewing this way and then coming down and... And it's just a mess. But um, let me go ahead and cut this other piece and see if we can't uh, get it working here before it gets too dark outside. Because it is like almost pitch black outside right now. Alright, after fiddling around with the pieces that I had. This is what we have so far. I've got this side. And the other side there. And all we need is the center. So we're going to cut a little rectangle here. I would already cut this tiny little one here. And then it's a matter of putting the ceiling on, screwing everything into place, and then hopefully uh, the ceiling for the entire RV is done. Other than, you know, the roof top to straighten it out and strengthen it and make sure it's totally sealed. But it's been having some heavy rainstorms here lately and rain isn't coming in from the roof, so it's fairly well sealed at this point. Um, we're only getting leaks here from the AC and, and like I said, I suspect it's because this, this part is actually caved in a little bit. So water's collecting up there like a little lake and it's coming through here instead of rolling off the side of the RV. So I need to eventually get up there and try to unclog that area and raise it up or pipe water out somehow. I don't know. But in the meantime, I am pretty happy with what we've done today so far um, because once we get this other piece in and get the roofing in, I can start to finish this wall up over here. I don't know if you can see that where the wall damage had occurred. We've got to put a new wall panel. But you can see it is dark outside and um, I need to wrap up. All right, and there we have our finished ceiling with the insulation in place. Doesn't that look better already? So we got the insulation all the way across. By the way, I recommend this stuff. This is, um, it comes on like a big huge board. This is about uh, two inches thick and it's fairly easy to work with. You can like easily measure or even, you know, cut weird shapes and stuff and then press it into place. And if you make it, you know, a little bit on the tight side, it kind of, the friction will hold it in place. So you don't need, like, glue or anything. Just friction will hold it. If you cut it tight enough, you know, give it a, a tight fit. So friction will, will hold it. But, yeah, it's looking really good. Just uh, need to put the, um, the wooden panel, panel board on it, and uh, we can call it a day. So I'm extremely happy. All right, here then are my two ceiling panels. I basically measured the width here, which was slightly less than um, four feet, going like this. And then um, the panel is like eight feet. I had them cut it right in half, so hopefully it'll fit exactly. But this panel will go here, and then the other panel will go on the other side. I'll put it up and then um, measure or I'm going to measure and then cut this um, little square here for the, the vent. And then the plan will be to use the, um, I don't know what happened to the, the vent thingy. There, that right there. 
a little plastic vent thing to help hold it up here in the center. But there's going to be a line here where it connects, and then that's where we're going to run the, um, I'm getting these one by, I guess these are like one by twos, one, yeah, about one by twos or whatever they are, uh, and then run it across like that and like that, but not over the, not over the vent, although I could, but I don't think I will run it over the vent, it would look pretty hokey. I'll figure that out, I'll figure it out as I go along, because you know, remember this is the Tim Burton construction. <laughs> company we we really don't plan things we kind of build and and adapt as we go and that's why everything's sort of lopsided and weird but you know what it's gonna be good enough and i actually ended up with some leftovers that i might work on with some projects so we'll see what happens but i got a lot of foam here i'm probably gonna end up tossing a lot of it because just carrying it is no good but you can see here was like where the damage was see i didn't i didn't use the damaged parts it had gotten crushed and of course I didn't need it. So I saved um, about $10 and 27 cents or $10 and 50 cents or so because I got damaged pieces that, and you can see I cut around the damaged parts because I didn't need it. These are extras. So it wasn't bad, what an awesome deal. I was able to get a panel to do all of that for like about $10 and 28 cents or something like that. Because it was normally like $21, $22 for a panel. So I got it in half. So, you need to push this side up a little bit, I guess, and then, um, yeah, I'll push that up before I put the panel up, but I'm so excited. It's almost done. You know, the weird thing is, um, this RV is taking quite a bit longer than it took to assemble the whole hut. I don't know if you saw a hut, yeah, you're watching concurrently with this video here, I guess, hut 2.0's construction. That whole thing took real time three weeks. This RV, real time, we're on three months. So, <laughs> I've really been slacking. <laughs> of course, with the hut, you know, I had a lot of time off because Walmart was scheduling me as low as like four to 12 hours per week of work, which was ridiculous. And that's why the hut was being built because I didn't know what was going to happen. They weren't letting me work. They weren't giving me hours. So, um, with... Um, the RV, on the other hand, you know, I've been working pretty consistently about about 28 to 32 hours a week. And then, you know, it's a long drive to and from work, so it's like a 40-hour week. And then, um, you know, working on YouTube, seeing my family, and dealing with other projects. So, I'm pretty happy. Um, it is kind of a mess in here. You can see I had to move everything all around again. Now i got to put everything all back. But um, hopefully within the next week or two, it can start just wrapping things up and decorating and stuff and trying to make it look really, really like a home versus a home under construction. Well, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Please make sure you give this a video a thumbs up. Um, share the video if you enjoyed it and think others might too. I do appreciate each and every one of you uh, for tuning in for the, to this channel and for your kind words and support and encouragement because I don't think I could have done it without you guys. So until next time, everyone, take care, stay encouraged, and remember, sometimes good enough is definitely good enough, and whether or not it is good enough, it's better than nothing at all. <laughs> so until next time, take care, be safe, and um, try to get some work done. <laughs> have a good day now.